While it's always fun to watch flashy nano blades and big pulse bomb sticks on highlight reels, there are also a bunch of impactful micro plays that often go unnoticed in the heat of the moment. That's why in today's video we want to showcase five of these great micro plays from the Overwatch League Countdown Cup. These plays may not have populated the kill feed, but are nonetheless still impressive in their impact and execution. During the clash between the Mayhem and Shock at the Countdown Cup, the fight over Hanamura Point B looked doomed for Florida as their time bank dwindled. In a desperate attempt to gain a foothold and not be fully held, the Mayhem pushed forward, straight through the main doorway with their tank line leading the charge. With their Lucio being dove by Rascal and forced to a side, unable to assist Fate and Gargoyle, Byram on Zenyatta heads in with a Transcendence activated to provide some much needed healing. However, this is countered by a great play from Choi Hyobin, who deploys his barrier behind the Mayhem Sigma, effectively breaking the line of sight and cutting him off the healing of Byram's Transcendence. Now, isolated and vulnerable, this barrier play enables the Shock team to make the crucial pick. Looking at how Yaki's Genji almost had a Dragon Blade on hand, and Gargoyle Sigma over 90% of the way to a fully charged Gravitic Flux, the fight, which ultimately ended in the Shock's favor, could have ended quite differently. As one of the most consistent tank players in the league, the San Francisco Shock's Choi Hyobin does not disappoint, as he continues to make highlight reel worthy plays with Sigma and prove why he's one of the candidates for the 2020 MVP vote. In the finals of the Asian Pacific's Countdown Cup, the Hangzhou Spark had their backs against the wall, being down in the series by two games and barely securing point B after a strong defense by the Dragons, which left them only with one minute in the time bank. The Shanghai Dragon on defense has Li Jie Gong on his signature Brigitte watching the entryway on the left while his team sets up around the main choke. Perhaps anticipating a cheese tactic in the tiebreaker round, combined with some good scouting by Void who sighted an enemy Symmetra, Li Jie Gong catches the Spark attempting to bypass the Dragon's double shield setup and blitz onto the point with a Symmetra teleporter flank. Before Kyoku's Sigma could finish fully teleporting in and deploying a defensive barrier, Li Jie Gong preemptively throws out his whipshot, timing it perfectly to boop the enemy Sigma to a watery grave just as his character model materializes. In quick succession, the Sparks Ash, Brigitte, and Batiste immediately TP in after, but without their Sigma to frontline for a side flank, the strategy is quickly abandoned, with the three falling back to safety. Fearing that the Spark would have tried to brute force their way in despite a 5v6 scenario, the Dragons for the most part abandoned their initial defensive positioning altogether together, and made moves to join their Pergita. Li Jiegon's well-timed whip shot pick on the enemy Sigma was all it took to force the Spark to back off and regroup. This botched flank burns up 37 seconds of the Spark's time bank, before they can even think about making a second attempt at touching the point. But with less than half of a minute to work with, the Dragons are able to hold their opponents securely at the archway and deny any capture percentage. It's one thing to stop a Genji mid Nano Blade, but what about preventing one from happening in the first place? During the final map of the semis between the Fusion and the Eternal, things had already reached an intense climax as the clock hit overtime, and Philly were only one good teamfight win away from pushing the payload to the final checkpoint. By now, things had started to become chaotic, with both teams committing everything they had in an attempt to come out ahead. Specifically, things had started to look grim for the Eternal, who had already blown most of their ultimates earlier on in the fight, and would need those to deal with the Fusion who were on the verge of having a potent combo of Ivy's Dragon Blade, Fury's Graviton Surge, and a Nano Boost from Alarm. Soon after losing their Zarya, FD God pops his rally and charges forward with Ben Best Sarissa to hold off the fusion to the best of their ability. After rounding the corner on the left of the payload, FD God finds Alarm's Ana alone and tries to take him out. However, just as the Eternals Brig and Orissa push them out, the fusion tried to go in on the Eternals' backline with an empowered Dragon Blade. But as soon as FD God hears the line from the enemy Ana, he instantly raises his shield and bashes Alarm mid ult stunning the fusion support player and denying Ivy from having a nano boosted blade. He proceeds to boop Alarm off of the ledge before being knocked off himself by Funny Astro's Brigitte. But it doesn't matter though, the job is done. By preventing the nano blade, the fusion realized they had lost their window of opportunity for a power play, and had Ivy hold back and let the dragon blade time run out instead of committing for a risky dive. This one well-timed shield bash from FD God effectively stopped the fusion from progressing any further, and bought enough time for the rest of his team to respawn and regroup to continue their defense and hold the payload from reaching the final checkpoint. While there may have been a plethora of great plays from support players throughout the Countdown Cup, this is one unsung play from FD God that we believe deserves some time in the limelight. Most of our micro plays highlight the actions of a particular individual, but this next one goes out to the entire LA Gladiators team, who were able to pull off one of the greatest outplays we've seen in the entire Countdown Cup. That caught both the Toronto Defiant and everyone watching off guard. With both teams running the same DPS duo of Junkrat and Symmetra, the Defiant, who had wrestled back control of the objective, opted to use her TP defensively, in order to control both the high ground while also being able to access the point if need be. 
The gladiators, however, who were already at 99 capture percentage, had something more aggressive in mind. To start things off, Birdring lets loose his rip tire, which follows the gladiators as they mobilize towards the right-hand side of the point. OGE on Orissa also drops his barrier to block some incoming damage while also returning some cover fire. With the area now a bit more secure, Kevster quickly sets up his teleporter on the ground, and joins the rest of his team as they make their way around the corner towards the point. But this is actually just a distraction in itself. What the Defiant don't know is that the other end of the teleporter is actually on the steps right next to their back line. As the Defiant now have their focus turned to the LA players trying to capture the point, they get caught completely off guard as OGE and Birdring, while controlling the rip tire, teleport in for the flank. By the time they notice the tire, it's already too late. Despite a valiant last-ditch immortality field attempt, it doesn't come fast enough as the tire detonates at close range, taking out the entirety of the Defiant's DPS and supports and allowing the Gladiators to take the map and finish the series 3-2. The series of events behind this play happens so fast that it didn't give the Defiant much time to react. Not only is this just another example of the creativity of the Gladiators, but also a great example of the high level of coordination they have as a team, which allowed them to pull this maneuver off all in the span of 8 seconds. There are few Ana players who left as big of an impression as Twilight with his high-risk, effective plays. In a back-and-forth round of Oasis Gardens, the Shock flip control of the point into their favor, and Twilight takes the opportunity flank. While the Fusion are focused on breaking through the main choke, he moves stealthily through the building on the left as he goes right up onto the Fusion duo of Alarm and Funny Astro, before using the element of surprise to throw out his Biotic Grenade onto the two supports. This acts as the go signal for Smurf and Rascal who dive in swiftly to take out the Fusion healers. The Fusion, obviously caught off guard, try to salvage the situation and turn things around with an EMP and having Sato jump onto the objective but this ends up being in vain and the shock continue to build up capture percentage. Having regrouped, the fusion try again to contest the objective, as things are now heading into overtime. But right after getting surprised by one Twilight Bionade, no one really expected them to be met with another so soon. After watching the doorway with his shield raised, Violet sees the fusion run by and gives the go signal for his team by popping Rally. But things quickly go south for Philly again. They get flanked by both shock supports with Twilight nailing a sleep dart onto Funny Astro's Brig so he couldn't raise his shield to block, followed up by a big bionade that again lands onto both fusion supports who quickly fall to the San Francisco's focus fire. With things in overtime and down both supports, the fusion try their best to contest the objective, but without any healing to sustain them, they begin to fall, and ultimately lose the map, being up against the wall at match point to the eventual tournament champions. And that's all for today's microplays. After winning yet another tournament, do you foresee a Dragons vs Shock finals this year? Which one of these plays was your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to help support us, drop a like down below and make sure to subscribe to keep up with all our future releases. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.